And for more on the latest in Ukraine, I'm joined by Michael Schenk. He's an associate director for legislative affairs at the Friends Committee on National Legislation. Thanks for joining us, uh, as always. Uh, what do you make of these new sanctions by the EU? Do you think it's just more of the same? Well, it's definitely not more of the same because before they were going after individuals. Now they're going after whole sectors, as your reporters mentioned, the banking sector, financial sector, oil and gas sector, military sector. I'm deeply disappointed because I think it's a disservice to diplomacy. Putin's going to, you know, put his heels in the ground, not budge. This is not going to bring him to the table. And public opinion polling, as you mentioned, Russia, very pro-Putin on this front. Uh, so, no, we're going to see the financial sector in London suffer from this. We're going to see the energy sector in Germany suffer from this. France's military uh, is going to suffer from this because this has to do with contracts going forward. So it's going to hit EU quite hard. It's going to hit the U.S. less hard. In fact, U.S. industry is probably quite happy because they can supplant some of Russia's oil and gas exports into the EU. Well, to what you're saying, you know, the U.S. says that, uh, you know, and President Obama came out today and said that he doesn't uh, want Russia to increase tensions and, and mm. ratchet the situation. But don't you think that increasing these economic sanctions is doing just that from the other side uh, and, and adding some tension and, and backing Putin into a corner? Right. So Obama's press conference a little duplicitous because he's saying we want to solve this diplomatically. Sanctions are often considered by many as violent, um, violent to the markets. The Economist doing this great story in the trillion dollar boo boo. It will hit Russia's markets very hard. The people will feel it. They said on your newscast that they aren't feeling it, but they will eventually. But it's going to hit EU in other ways. I was in Germany and Poland earlier this year, right after Russia invaded Crimea, and I was heartened by Germany's disinterest in escalating the conflict. They didn't want NATO to go in. Now, Poland was very interested, but Germany not so interested. So I'm disappointed in Brussels for ramping up. I don't think it's going to be useful. But to your point, yeah, it is almost doublespeak because uh, it is only going to polarize the parties in this conflict more. But the EU has been hesitant this entire time right. to do anything. Uh, they've held back. So why is the United States moving in and, and trying to maybe fight a fight that's not there? Right. It's almost a proxy fight. Uh, they're pushing it, I think, for some industry reasons. You see in Congress, they're very keen to supplant. You know, Russia is the top gas exporter in the world, the second largest oil exporter in the world. If we're sanctioning their oil and gas sector, it makes it very easy for U.S. industry to come into EU and supply instead of Russia. So I think there's some private sector interests here. But yeah, the U.S. is almost fighting this fight for the EU, and the EU has come along reluctantly. Let's turn to MH17 quickly. The Dutch prime minister uh, reached out to the Ukrainian government mm -hmm. asking it to hold fire in eastern Ukraine so they can get investigators and so that international uh, investigators can get to that crash site. Um, what do you make of that? So the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights calling this a possible war crimes. They're going to do an investigation. That's all good, though that might escalate this kind of political stigma around the situation. The Pentagon, unfortunately, is partnering with Kiev, the Ukraine government, to locate these mobile launchers for the surface-to-air missiles and potentially target them with airstrikes. Problem there is that these mobile launchers are often in civilian populations. So if the Ukraine government does strike it with the help of the Pentagon, you're looking at higher civilian casualties. I think the way forward is court of law do a proper investigation, hopefully get in there, but not with military because it's only going to escalate, particularly the civilian population. And again, I'll just add, uh, no U.S. citizens except that one dual uh, passport holder, uh, one of yeah. the victims on that flight. So here we are again. All right, yeah. Michael Schenk, we appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks so much. much.